In today's show, we're gonna learn about the Power Apps Google Maps API. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, we're gonna explore Power Apps and some of the fun functions it gives us around location services. And then once we learn about that, we're gonna go sign up for a Google Maps API account. We're gonna get that signed up and then we're gonna integrate the two so you can bring map services and location services into your Power Apps, both for displaying maps and interacting with them, but also so you can track the data behind the scenes in case you need to for like service workers and things like that. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, in today's show, we're gonna learn about Power Apps and the Google Maps API. So we're gonna jump in there, we're gonna look at Power Apps. With Power Apps, we have one of the functions we use is location. And so location is great because it's gonna let us get latitude, longitude, and altitude off of the local device, right? So whether it's a Google or an Apple phone or even a PC, the PC stuff's not as uh, accurate, obviously. But we're gonna be able to get that information and use those coordinates. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go sign up for a Google Maps API account. Real simple, right? I know you're not a developer, I'm not a developer, no big deal, we're gonna sign up for an API key. And then I'm gonna show you how to take the data we get from Power Apps and plug that into Google Maps URLs to return a location map of where they're at with a nice little pin. Or uh, maybe we wanna do is we wanna let them do things like enter addresses and stuff like that, and then have them open up a map. So we're gonna kind of mess with some of those different options and get you started. And then I'll kind of wet your whistle a little bit and show you some of the tricks we're gonna learn in future videos. It's a little more complicated once we get these kind of basic things out of the way. Sounds like a lot of fun to me. So what I wanna do first is we'll switch over to my phone and we'll do a little demonstration there on the app I built so you can get an idea of what we're gonna to do together and then we'll go build the app ourselves. Okay, so we brought out my phone here and I'm trying to trial this thing called Air Server which is letting me actually cast my phone to my computer so I can record here. But I'd try this out instead of recording locally on the iPhone just to see if it works or not. All right, so here is this demo app I made. So we'll click on this to open it up. And so then after a few seconds here, it opens up and you can see that this is a great example of one of the scenarios, right? So, hello, Shane Young, don't fret. This app will help you figure out where you are and look. And so then down below, there is a Google Maps map, right? With a nice little uh, pointer showing exactly where I'm at. Now, I faked the geo coordinates because it turns out my wife does not want you to have a GPS representation of where I live. Eh, how sad. But anyway, um, that's okay. We're seeing how it works. Then down there in the bottom left, we've got the latitude, the long longitude, and the altitude. So I will probably uh, delete a bunch of that also so you can't see that. But that's what I have down there. And so you can kind of see, maybe you can see, that it's moving as I kind of move the device around because those are very, you know, up-to-date, right-now type of numbers. If we click on man manual address entry, here is a demonstration of being able to type in the different information, right? So there is... Um, you know, an address a user typed, maybe it's coming out of a contact record or something like that that you've got stored in SQL or CDS or an Excel spreadsheet, who knows? But anyway, we're taking address information and if I click on open in Google Maps, look at this, this is actually launching the Google Maps client on my iOS device, boom. If I use it with a browser, then it would have just opened Google Maps up in the browser. But since Google Maps is installed on my iPhone, we've got that. Pretty neat, huh? If we go back here, I also didn't show you one of the other tricks of this particular screen. And so on this screen, if I click on the map, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to launch uh, Google Maps and, and get us in here. So pretty cool. You can see my video game just popped up something too. How rude. <laughs> All right. So if we click on back on that. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys, let's go back to this screen. And so down here in the bottom right, I've got a little special icon. And so this is some of the stuff that we're gonna talk about in future videos. This is just to get you more excited. So this top button is going to take my GPS coordinates. It's gonna send them over to the Google uh, Geocoding Geo -coding API, and it pulls back a whole laundry list of data it knows about these coordinates. And so I'm returning the locality, which is Warren County, Ohio. It's the county I live in. Um, but that one's a little too complicated for today. We're not gonna do that. And then we'll also do a separate video, but down here at the bottom is open in Apple Maps. And so then that little link is going to take our geo data, and instead of opening the Google Maps tool like we did before, we open the Apple one. So if you prefer the Apple tool over the Google tool, good for you. We are gonna make that possible too. So pretty fun stuff, huh? 
So let's jump over now back to my desktop and look at how I did all this and help you guys mechanically build it, right? Because I'm not going to show you this app. We're going to start with a blank app and build this for you. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so now we're with someone a little more familiar, right? Back in our friends' Power Apps. So let's first start with how we get the geo data from Power Apps. So I'm going to put on my screen a label. I'm going to say insert label. And we're going to say we want to have the latitude here. Okay. So we're going to do something like that. Ambersand, right? So take that text we have, concatenate, add to it. And all you have to do is you're going to type in location dot, and then there's the latitude. Boom. Just like that, that is the latitude of my machine. Now, because I'm on a desktop PC right now doing this, uh, what happens is it's you know sending my IP address to the service, and it's trying to like, guess where I am. So it does a really bad job, which is like miles from my house, but that's okay because then now the wife's not mad that I'm showing you my data. But so that is the latitude of where my IP address is uh, located. Also keep in mind when you're working with this stuff, right, that it is very device dependent on what type of uh, results you get. So don't blame, uh, don't blame me if you're not happy with what you're seeing. Okay, but so that's how you get the latitude. So let's insert another label. Throw it down here, as you can probably guess because you guys are pretty smart. Longitude, like that, and like that, and then we'll do location. And with location, there's nothing to add, right? You don't have to install any uh, or any data connections. Now, when you build an app with this and you launch it the first time, it is going to say, do you want to allow this device to use your location services? So your users will see a prompt to allow the location services to be ran, but there's nothing for you to add. We just started using location, longitude, latitude. There's also another one for altitude. Altitude doesn't show up here on my uh, PC, right? It has no idea that I'm eh, about three feet under the ground here in my office. So anyway, I won't mess with that, but there was this third option here, right? When we deleted that, so we could have used altitude. But now that we know how to get the location, right? The latitude and longitude for a person, now we need to be able to take and translate that and use it with a map. So to do that, what you can do with Google is there's this great little URL. So I'm going to switch over here. And so here you can see it's HTTPS, maps, google.com, maps, API, static map, center. And then here is, this is the um, long, latitude. This is the latitude. And then right here is my longitude and zoom level, size, 600 by 600, that's pixels. And then key. Oh, and then there's a whole bunch of pound, 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 pound. It's because I wasn't going to show you my actual production key. So you guys need to get your own Google API's key in order to take advantage of this. And I thought it'd be kind of kind of me to show you how to do that. All right, so let's minimize this. Let's go over here and I'm gonna go to Bing and I'm gonna search for Google Maps API, just like that. And so then this is going to give me a link to the Google Maps platform. And don't worry, all the URLs for all this stuff, I'll make sure these are all in the description below. But here you can see it says, hey, welcome to Google Maps platform. And what you want to do, even if you've never done this before, is you're going to say, I want to get started. What product do you want to use? The maps, the routes, the places? I have not messed with routes or places, but I've done maps, and that's the one we need for this. I'm going to say maps. So let's say maps, continue. It's going to say select a project, and so we'll just create one. We'll call it um, create a new project, video demo, just like that. And then click next. Now, I've previously set up my Google Maps account, right? I do practice these videos ahead of time. So when you guys click next there, what's going to happen is you now will have to put in billing and payment information. So you'll have to give it a credit card, okay? But don't worry, they have like, free usage tiers, they have free uh, trial accounts. I think I'm currently on like a $300 free trial for 365 days. I don't know. There's a bunch of options, so it's not gonna cost you anything up front while we start learning and playing with this, but you do have to put in your credit card to get access to all this, okay? So then when you do it, sometimes it brings you right back to the screen, sometimes it takes you where you need to go. If it brings you back to here, what you can do is you can just click up on console up here in the right. And so then in the console, yes, yeah, so you can see my trial information up here. I don't even understand any of it. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on APIs. And so this is showing all the different APIs that have been av available. So if you start trying to use something and it's not uh, in use, 
you can come down here and be like, oh yeah, I want to take advantage of the roads API. So you would click on it and turn it on. But the one that I want is the geo encoding and I've already enabled that. So we are good to go there. So then what I want to do now is I'm going to go click on this navigation menu and then I'm going to say I want the APIs and services and then I want my credentials. So this is showing me the API keys that I've currently made, which I'm currently blurring out so you can't see, haha. -ha. But I'm going to say, you know, I want to create a new one. So I'm going to say create credentials, an API key. And this is going to make a new one right now. So we're going to say, all right, let's copy that and we'll close. So now I have an API key three, which you can see because I'm going to get deleted as soon as we get done. <laughs> but now we have a key. So open back up that notepad document, right? That URL that you could get from down below. And I'm going to paste over all these pound markers. Now notice it's between the equal sign. So key equals your API key goes here and then an ampersand will be the last character. So we're going to paste that in. Okay. I think that looks good. So grab that whole URL now, now that we've got your key in it, and let's go back over to Power Apps, like this. And over here in Power Apps now, what I wanna do, because we're gonna do some baby steps, is we're gonna say, give me a button. And this button, if you click on it, I want to launch that URL, right? So I just pasted in the URL we just had over in Notepad. Make sure you've got the little parentheses, right? And then quotes and then quotes parentheses. So if we hold down the alt key, and press the button. Cool. All right. So it gave us a map of downtown Cincinnati based on the coordinates, right? And we do this in baby steps because you need to make sure this works, right? Did this work? Were you able just to use that URL and get to it? Thumbs up. Then we know we're in good shape. So what we're going to do now is we're just close out of that. We'll go back over here. And so now what we can do is we're going to go to media and then images, put an image control. And so then for the image, what you want to do is you need to just paste in that exact URL, but you need the quotes around it. Okay. So just like that. So quotes URL from what you got from notepad quotes, boom. You are now using the Google API key to do everything you ever hoped and dreamed for. Yeah. Now the downside is we have a hard coded URL, but that's okay. We were able to show that we got this working, right? We've got the first step done. So now let's start to mess with this images. Okay. So right now you can see that it is centered on this particular latitude spot and this longitude location. Well, let's go fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this image string, right? Because the image is just a string right now, and we're going to piece it together the way we want. And we do that just like we did before using the ampersand to concatenate text. So for the first one, I'm going to put in just a close my quotes. I'm going to put in ampersand, and then I'm going to go to the end of the latitude. And I'm going to put in another ampersand and then another quote. Okay. So that literally says exact same thing it did before, right? Take this text and then right there, no spaces, no nothing. Add in this text, then add on to the end of that, this text, right? Remember anything in uh, quotes is always text. And then it just knows that this right here is text, but we did, we did a really cool thing there because now we know this is the latitude and how do we dynamically represent latitude? We say location dot latitude. Oh, look, the map changed. It's showing us something different because it's now showing us a different latitude. So let's do the same thing for longitude. Longitude is everything from that minus sign. I'm a negative longitude. I don't even know what that means, but I am. How sad for me. And I ends in the nine, right? That ampersand is the first part of the next portion of the URL. So let's put a parentheses right here to get that text captured. Let's do an ampersand again. Let's do a space, all right? Let's put a parentheses right here. So we know that all that's text and this little ampersand there. So nothing changed again, right? But we've now got the longitude locked down in its own little place. So what do we do? 
location dot longitude. And all of a sudden the map changed again, right? And this is that weird place that it thinks that my uh, IP address is located. Yeah, good for it. I'm glad my PC doesn't know where it lives. <laughs> all right, so we did that. Now, where's our little marker? Well, let's keep reading the URL. So the zoom level, how far do we zoom in on this map? Well, let's change this. I've never changed this number. So it was 18, let's change it to 20. Ooh, too close. Let's change it to 15. Oh, well, there you go. So we zoomed out a little bit. Neat. Size, so this is 600 by 600 pixels. So this is what's telling Google what size uh, image to return. I'm not gonna mess with that because I'll make Power Apps size things weird, but you could absolutely change that, uh, especially if you're doing this like browser-based. So then we got an ampersand and then key. And so then there's that new key I delete or created. Remember, I'm going to delete it as soon as this video is over so you can't steal and run up my API keys. And then there is a marker. Well, the color for the marker is red. I'm going to change that to purple because I think it's funny to do. Purple. But well, we still don't see the marker. And it looks like there's a label. It looks like they label it A. That's weird. And then what is this? Oh, there's our friend 39, body, body, body again. R latitude, right? That's how it knows where to put the pin, whatever you've got in this portion. So... We know the trick. I'm not even going to do it slow this time. I'm just going to say boom, location equals latitude. And, oh, there's a comma, so that's text. So we got to make sure we capture that comma text. So we'll do it like that. And there's our negative 84 number. What is he? He is location dot, oh, dot, I got to type it, longitude. And then there's now an extra parenthesis, or no, extra quote at the end, because that's no longer needed. <gasps> Whoa, it's me, look at that. So now we've taken the actual coordinates where my silly PC thinks it lives, we've shown it on the map, we changed the zoom level, we changed the color of the little marker, and then we put the marker in right there in the color of purple. Notice the marker is currently A. Um, they can only be single digits, but you can change this to make X marks the spot, ha, 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 or seven marks the spot. I don't know why you would do that. I am definitely not a Google Maps API expert. Let's be very clear, right? I'm a Power Apps expert who just happens to know how to do enough things with Google Maps to make Power Apps cool. But there you go, guys, right? You have now made yourself a, taken the location device data here, geo-encoded that, and sent it off to our friends at Google so they could return that to you and have the location. So this is a handy thing for your users, you know, to be able to see a location based on where they're at or where they, they did things, right? Plotting on maps, that type of stuff. Lots of fun to be had. The Google uh, Maps API is pretty cool. Now, the next thing I wanted to do in my app, though, is I wanted to have it that if you clicked on the map, that it would actually open the Google Maps, okay? So what I figured out for that is that I need to, uh, I went over here and I said, all right, no, no, that's not how I did that. How did I do this one? All right, I got me a drink, I remember now. All right, so if you go back over here to Notepad, so what I did was I figured out that if you do um, Google Maps slash places and then just put in the uh, latitude and longitude, it will launch. So grab this little piece of code, once again, down below, so you can just cut and paste it, so I don't have to read it to you. But so we're gonna take this image control and we're gonna say on select for this image control, launch Google Maps place location latitude and location longitude. So let's try this out. Well, we know that's right. So then now click on the map, it opened a new tab and boom, just like that, we are now miles from my house, which is so weird. But um, it thinks that I live here and it has opened that in Google Maps. And so remember on my uh, iPhone when I did this, it opened the Google Maps client just automatically. It was amazing. But here it goes ahead and does, um, you know, the browser because there's not a Google Maps client on my local machine. But there you go. You have now made a screen app where you can go and get the data and if they click on it, it launches in Google Maps. Fun, fun, fun. All right, let's make another new screen. And let's talk a little bit about the next piece of the puzzle, and that is taking an address that has been provided, whether that's been provided by the users typing it in or by um, us, 
and how are we going to use that? So what I had to do to figure this one out, can I kind of show you guys how I think, is I actually just went up here and said, you know what, if I go to one Microsoft way, so I just went to Google Maps, right, just normal Google Maps, let's start over, www.google.com slash maps. Okay, I went into Google Maps, right, google.com slash maps. I typed in my address, and so in this particular one, I'm gonna do Microsoft's address, and hit go, and so it took me here, yay, but look, there's a URL. So maps, place, that's the address, and the geo stuff. Well, that's interesting. But notice that it kind of adds this on. So let's delete all this. Does, let's just copy this, right? And so if we click on just that, look at that. That works too. And then Google will slap on by itself here in like 10 seconds, boom, or two seconds. It slaps on the geo stuff. But it looks like that's a valid URL. So I went over to my Power Apps. I said, give me a button because this is how I make sure things do what I want it to from Power Apps. I said launch, just that exact URL that I just stole from them, okay? Notice there's no API key, there's no nothing. So we'll hit the Alt key, we'll press the button. Bamo, whammo. So we know that that way of just putting an address into that URL format will work. All right, all right, all right. So let's go over here and let's do a um, input and so there's one input and so for this one we'll put in one Microsoft way and then we'll do another input right so that was the street so then what city is it I believe it's Redmond and what, one of the things you might do when you're testing all this is if you just put the default put some default values in that are good that way you don't have to keep typing in addresses over and over again as you go through the 217 testing cycles it'll take you to get through the first one. And so then last input here, we'll put in a, uh, a state, and for us that is Washington. Um, now, one of the neat things I figured out was that Google's pretty smart. I think you probably all already knew that. But so for example, if I get rid of the zip code, so right, so we just do WA, it still works, right? And then they're gonna bolt in the zip code and all that because once they, they automatically figure that out. So Google does a lot of help work. So we're gonna skip the zip code, we're gonna skip the, um, the country code, but you can kind of, anything that you can give to Google that kind of gets Google moving the right way, they're gonna try and guess to show you what you wanna see. But so there's what we need. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna throw a label on the screen, okay? And in this label, I'm just going to paste that URL. Why? Because we need to build that URL manually based off of the data that's up here or the data you're getting out of SQL. So that's one. So I'm going to put another label. And so this is going to be where we're going to try and build it. So I'm going to paste in here. All right. So Google places, maps, places, and then there's the address. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this and this and this, right? One for one match, we haven't broken anything, but now we at least know, because we know this is going to stay the same, so it'll always just be text. So now let's just isolate this one Microsoft way. So I'm gonna go right here. I'm going to close quotes around that, do an ampersand. Okay, right, nothing new there, just simple text manipulation, but breaking it up into pieces is gonna make it easier for us to plug in. So now I need to get from one Microsoft way here to here. But notice there's pluses. Ah, oh, probably can't tell my users to type in a bunch of pluses, right? So we can't just use, because what I want to do, right, is I just want to say text input, oh, input one dot text. Oh, get it out of the quotes though. Or out of the, yeah, out of the quote. Yeah, the quotes. Right, so but that doesn't work because it has a bunch of spaces in the URL. All right, ready to learn something new? You are. There is what is called the substitute function. This is like back to my PowerShell days. What we can do is we can say, hey, I want to substitute in that string of text that I give you. I want you to find everywhere that there is a space, right? So space is represented by quotes, space, quotes. And for everywhere there's a space, I want you to fill in a plus. Close that. Uh-oh, Raggy, one plus Microsoft plus way. And 
that might be what we were looking for, right? So the substitute function, it takes text, in this case, or uh, whatever they typed in here. It finds all the instances of a space. That's what we say right here by putting a space blank. And every time it finds a space, it changes it into be a plus. There you go. So then now we need and Redman. All right, well, how are we going to do that? Well, we need that plus also. So I'm going to put a little quote here. I'm going to do an ampersand here. Oh, it looks like I need all of that at the end. We're going to need an ampersand here. So it's like, hey, I do not know what Redman is. I was like, I know, I know. So what do you do? Text input two dot text. Oh, oh. And what happens if you live in San Francisco where you have a space? What would you need to make sure you probably do? Just use the same substitute formula for the city field. So then that way it would get that also. Oh, sorry, I did not mean to click off. All right, and then the last piece is we need to get our friend Washington because we know we don't actually need any of that stuff at the end. So let's close this. Let's say, all right, you're just going to be text input three dot text. No, not tab index, dot text. And then that's all we need, I think. So we'll delete all the stuff off the end. So that matches that, right? Because we don't care about the last plus in the zip code. We figured out it works without that. So let's try this. Let's take this formula. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back up here to our button. And we're going to say instead of launching that URL that we know works, let's launch this new crazy thing that we just built. Oh, let's make it a little bigger so we can see. Ah, I got an extra set of parentheses in there. Or an extra set of quotes. I get quotes and parentheses backs up. It's like one of my personal dyslexias. Okay, so no warnings, no nothing. What do you guys think? Think we got it right? I think we got it right. Let's hold down the Alt key. Let's press on button. Fingers crossed. Yeah, look at that. So now we have made it so that you can type in information in here. And remember, I told you the Google um, map stuff's pretty smart. So let's just get rid of Microsoft Way. And let's just change this to be um, Atlanta, Georgia. Let's hit the button, right? So that's showing me what it's gonna pass to Google. Hit the Alt key, press the button. <gasps> Look at that, it figured it out, even though I sent it a terrible URL in a completely different format. So where I see this being the most useful, right? Well, one is it doesn't require an API key. So if this is all you need, you don't have to sign up for that API key. But two, this is great if you've got that customer data already, right? The first solution we looked at was if you wanna grab information from the devices and tag you know, what the users are doing, either behind the scenes or letting them mark locations. This one, is just taking data, whether they're typing it in, you're pulling it from a database or your SharePoint, wherever you're getting the data from, and then taking them off to Google Maps. Also remember, when we launch these Google Maps URLs, that if they have Google Maps on their device, it will launch the Google Maps client for them automatically. We'll cover the Apple one later too, it's not very complicated, just felt like it was a separate video. But I think that's everything I wanted to show you guys today, right? Now you've got enough to start poking and prodding. I will tell you that if you go back over here, the um, documentation is wonderful around helping you figure it out, giving you some sample URLs and stuff. That's how I figured all this out was the handy dandy Google Cloud Platform documentation. So check it out. And remember that also, this is a customer solution, right? I did this with a customer this week and it went great. So that's why I'm showing you. But if you need help with your Power Apps, whether it's this or anything else, or your flows, or any of your SharePoint Online type of stuff, right? Hit us up, powerapps911 or boldzebras.com. Either one, we're happy to help you guys. So I think that'll wrap it up for my Saturday today. So thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. If you got a second, click the subscribe button. That always keeps me making more videos. Or if you wanna to work together, need some help getting your Power Apps going, Hit me up at PowerApps911. Always happy to work together. Or finally, if you're really just looking for more videos, that's probably what it is, check out the PowerApps playlist over here and you know, enjoy that. All right, thanks and have a great day.